Good morning, this is Ocean Community Church. I'm Pastor Phil, and it is Sunday, September 20th, and so I'm glad that you're here. It's good for us to be together today. Our prayer is that as we gather today, we will draw closer to God, we will become more aware of Christ's presence with us always, and that the Holy Spirit will begin to work in our lives as the Spirit continues that work of transforming us day by day from one degree of glory to the next, so that the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control that God desires in our lives will uh, emerge and be a blessing to those around us. And so you and I have been drawn by the Spirit of Christ in some way to be here today. And so we pray that as we open scripture, as we share songs, that it becomes a moment of uh, growth and encouragement uh, in your life. So it's good for us to be together today. So uh, encourage you to read the notes that we sent out by email. If you're not getting them, please call the church office and we'll mail them to you if need be. But uh, a lot of news about what's going on in the life of the church and uh, the plans that uh, we're trying to develop for possible in-person option uh, come the end of October. We're just exploring it now. So if you want to be part of that, please let this, uh, us know. Sharon and Trudy are working on that as uh, committee chairs. And uh, so please talk to them if you're interested in that. Uh, as we continue to reach out to our members with phone calls and driveway visits, again, if you want us to come by and we're not getting to you, just call us and let us know. Um, you know, we're very aware that everyone is dealing with this in different ways. We have people who are out there all the time uh, as essential workers or with people. And then we have others who are, are not going anywhere anytime soon. They're keeping very close and keeping very separate. And so we're trying to be mindful of all of that difference. But what brings us together today is the uh, shared faith in Christ and our desire to grow in faith and to grow in service. And so let's uh, work on that and keep that as our center as we go on. What we do here today is to try to get our hearts and minds back in a place of faith, of hope, and of love, uh, to come together in the presence of God, to worship and praise, and to remember and renew. So, uh, you know, when you look at all the news and, and everybody's outraged about this or that or other things and uh, it becomes a moment where we need to calm ourselves, where we need to find a way to experience the stillness that God means for us. And it's in that stillness that we hear the voice of God speak. We're going to look tonight in our Zoom prayer meeting, again, back at Elijah and uh, Elijah on the mountain and the earthquake and the wind and the storm. But he hears God in the quietness. And so we'll talk about that together today. So I hope that you'll use the notes that are provided for later reading and reflection. Uh, that's one of the ways that you can use this unusual time because the notes have all the video and the, the message notes that you can refer to through the week. So we hope that you'll use it. So let's think about a sanity anchor for today. I was talking with a friend this week about earbugs or songs that get stuck in your mind and repeat over and over again. And this week for me, those of you on Zoom prayer meetings know this, it's been a poem by a Swedish Christian woman from the 1800s uh, named Carolina Sandel. Uh, she wrote a poem called Day by Day. And uh, it's not the God spell Day by Day, uh, but she wrote over 650 hymns in her life. She was a daughter of a Lutheran pastor and she's very close to him. And uh, part of uh, her reason for writing the hymns was as a coping strategy for her, uh, for a traumatic event in her life where she witnessed her father drowning. And so you can imagine the, the difficulty of that. And, um, and so she turned to writing and expressing. Uh, and so this is one of the poems that she wrote. And I wanna just comment on it. Day by day, and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my father's wise bestowment, I've no cause for worry or for fear. 
He who is hard is kind beyond all measure, gives unto each day what he deems best. Lovingly, it's part of pain and pleasure, mixing toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is with me, with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me, he whose name is counselor and power. The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As your days, your strength shall be in measure. This is the pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust your promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith's sweet consolation offered me within your holy word. Help me, Lord, when toil and trouble meeting, ere to take, as from a father's hand, one by one the days, the moments fleeting, till I reached the promised land. It says so much that has helped me. The reality of toil and trouble, the mixture each day of good and bad, the promise of God to give us each day the measure that we need each hour, the measure that we need finding peace and trust of God's provision and presence. We can't fix everything. We can't solve everything. We're not God. We are given a small part of the world to deal with, to manage our own lives, to have influence and, and engage the lives of those around us. And so we try to be faithful with that small part of the world that God gives us. And uh, we can manage our own hearts, minds, and souls and we can decide how we will show up and respond to what happens. So as we come to this time to renew our faith, our hope, and our love, we remember that this is always true, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that he came to bring us life and light and hope, that he died so that our past would be past, that he rose so that our lives would be lived with hope. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And so grace, mercy, and peace to you this day from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let me offer an opening prayer and then Amy will come and lead in the opening hymn. Let us pray. God who created the universe to declare your glory and share your love, we come today to renew our faith to reconnect with your presence, to find your provision for us in the anxieties we face each day. As toil and trouble meet in our lives, show us how to find, as Carolina Sandwell did, a trust that calms our souls and leads us to know your peace. Amen. And so I invite Amy to come and share with us our opening hymn. <laughs> Morning. Uh, today's opening hymn is Trusting Jesus. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's take a moment to confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Take a moment in our service for our prayer of confession. It becomes a time when we pause to remember that uh, we are people who have received grace, that our uh, standing with God comes to us not because of anything we have done, but because of an act of mercy of God towards us that is possible in the work, the life, the death, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so our prayer of confession. Please join me if you have it in your notes. God who has come to walk with us, we confess that we have often ignored or rejected your offer of fellowship. We have our own plans, our own paths that we think will take us where we want to go. And we follow them in spite of the signs that they are dead ends. Forgive us and help us to trust that your ways are good and that you are always ready to renew fellowship with us if we turn towards you. Amen. Let's take a moment and reflect on where that might speak to us today. People of Jesus Christ, hear this good news. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Believe this good news. In Jesus Christ, our sin is forgiven. We no longer have to let them govern our lives. We can live in the peace of God and bless others. And so may God give you the ability to focus your attention, not on your own failures, not on your past, but on what God wants to do in you and through you to bless others. Amen. Jesus was asked about the commandments of God What's the most important thing that we can do as we seek to be people who follow the way of God? He said this, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. And the second commandment is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so Jesus takes love as central to the life that is following the way of God. May God give us grace to practice that as forgiven people who have received the love and the mercy of God. Amen. So let me introduce our scripture for today. We have two passages from Mark's gospel that you probably know. They are both about Jesus, the disciples, a boat, and a storm. And in one, he's walking on the water. In the other, he's sleeping in the back of the boat. I have some sympathy with that last one. I 
Remember when I was growing up, my summer job was clam digging on the Great South Bay with my uncle. And I remember many times sleeping down in the hole, we called it, next to the engine as he steered out to where we would tong for the day. The rocking of the waves can be soothing. And uh, in those days, it was the Jesus people days, uh, youth groups of all the churches were overflowing and active. And I would often be up late at night and go down in the hole in the morning and sleep uh, next to the warm engine and the, uh, the sounds of the regular sounds of the waves. But in this story, they wake Jesus up. There are two ways of uh, being that will be important for us to think about today in these stories. On the one hand, there's somebody resting peacefully and walking calmly. On the other hand, there are people who are terrified and anxious and afraid. And so we're going to talk about how faith speaks to both of those. And so I'm going to read these passages and I'll read them again in our message time. This is the word of the Lord to us. Right then, Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake toward Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. And after saying goodbye to them, Jesus went up onto a mountain to pray. Evening came and the boat was in the middle of the lake, but he was alone on the land. He saw his disciples struggling. They were trying to row forward, but the wind was blowing against them. And very early in the morning, he came to them walking on the lake. He intended to pass by them. And when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost and they screamed. And seeing him was terrifying to all of them. Just then he spoke to them, be encouraged. It's me, don't be afraid. He got into the boat and the wind settled down. And his disciples were so baffled that they were beside themselves. And again, earlier in Mark's gospel, we read this. Later that day, when evening came, Jesus said to them, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat just as he was. Other boats followed. Gale force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat so that the boat was swamped. But Jesus was in the rear of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They woke him and said, teacher, don't you care that we are drowning? He got up and gave orders to the wind and said to the lake, silence, be still. And the wind settled down and there was a great calm. Jesus asked them, why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? And overcome with awe, they said to each other, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. And so let me talk for a minute about the children's message that I offered this morning. Uh, I talked to the kids about sports. I asked them if they liked sports and if they could name some of the sports. I couldn't hear them too well, but I think maybe later I'll look on Facebook and see some of the names of the sports. Some are individual sports like golf and singles tennis. Some are team sports like soccer and football. And I talked to them about Christian life is not meant to be a solo sport, an individual sport. It's meant to be a team sport. God doesn't mean for us to do things alone. God gives us people who will stay with us in difficult times and help us to do whatever we have to do. The word church is really another a word in another language that means a gathering. So when Jesus said, I will build my church, he, he wasn't thinking about buildings. He was thinking about getting people together who would follow him, listen to his words, put them into practice. And so uh, we are a gathering of people who gather with Jesus. We can't do that physically now, but we can do it here with this technology and in other ways. We'll get back together physically in the future, but for now, let's use this to play our sport together, the Christian life. And so uh, uh, we're getting ready to do some programming with the, the youth and the children, uh, the children, and they're gonna get together and get some of their materials, uh, visit each other in a park where they can be distant, pick up their children's Bibles that we bought for them and some of the materials. And they're gonna begin meeting uh, between services here uh, on Zoom uh, for their uh, lesson time. And so that's something we can do. And so let me, pray before I share the 
main message today. May the words of my mouth, O Lord, and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As I start the message today, I want to start with a video. We're going to be working on the idea of anxiety and faith in an anxious world for a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be using some materials from the Fuller Youth Institute. Fuller Seminary has prepared materials that was, was before COVID uh, about uh, anxiety, particularly for teens. And I'm going to adapt that and use that together with us for a couple of weeks uh, as a way to branch out uh, into some other thoughts and to think together about how faith makes a difference for us in our anxieties. And so we're going to begin with this video. So it's about four minutes. So let's watch this together. And I calm down, calm down. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. And then you just keep saying that faster and faster. I should not be this worried about it. It gave me a lot of anxiety not knowing like what to even do in high school. Stress is a normal part of life when we are under pressure in new and demanding circumstances. That's a good thing because it helps us adapt when it matters most. There are many reasons why we may feel a little bit of anxiety in today's world. Anxiety is one of the emotions that doesn't feel great, like sadness or anger or fear. Anxiety is unpleasant, but it plays an important role in our lives. We are going to feel anxiety from time to time in our lives, but we don't have to feel anxious about feeling anxious. Everyone experiences anxiety. Um, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. I do feel anxious. I'm anxious all the time. I think just the overall pressure to do very well in a lot of different categories. Homework. For AP classes, for honors and all that. Once that test comes in front of me, everything blanks and I'm like, oh gosh. Reading out loud in class. Getting ready for college. Did you get in? Have you sent the things? And accumulates, you know, it's just stress, stress, stress. These relationships can cause a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, making friends. Relationships with parents. Social media, I blame myself too. We, we put the best parts of ourselves on social media. And if you spend like a lot of time like looking at that and kind of indoctrinating yourself that that's like how life is, then you kind of blame yourself for a lot of the bad things that happen. Well, like a lot of people were very competitive with each other. You want to have this certain body or you want to have this certain amount of money. Growing up, I definitely didn't have a lot of the things that I wanted, you know, like the things that I wore or even like school supplies. I was like up all night trying to think, is this the right thing to wear? Like, what do freshmen wear? I had like a ton of acne on my face and I felt like nobody else did in my school and especially in my friend group. I felt like that's all that people were looking at. I just have really racing thoughts. My thoughts just move really quickly to like all the different fears. And a lot of the times it's not even something that would happen. It's just your anxious brain just coming up with scenarios. It's like everything's closing in on you and like you can't do anything like you're worried about what's gonna happen. If anyone talks to me, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other. I just focus on like what I'm anxious about and I can't think about anything else. Sometimes that can affect your physical body. You can have a hard time breathing. You're like breathing, I guess. Like it kind of like bottles up and it freaks you out. I, I just can't breathe. I can't get a full breath in. Sometimes it's like my chest is tight. Other times it's like I'm burning a hole in my stomach. If you feel like you're on a roller coaster and it's like right when you're at the very, very top and you feel like your stomach is like up in your chest and you're like about to fall. Having a thousand cups of coffee in your body, which it, you can imagine is a little much. <laughs> a little more sweaty than usual. You don't want anyone to notice and you kind of just think that everyone's looking at you and you're a weirdo and no one's gonna like you because you're freaking out. That's kind of what it feels like, at least for me. It's really hard to explain. I, for a long time, felt like I was the only one who felt that way. 
And when I started talking to my friends about it, they were like, oh, I actually feel <laughs> the same way. Like, a lot of people deal with that problem. I mean, I know, at least with me and my friends, we would all experience it, and we'd just talk about it a little bit, like what's what's going on, like what we're worried about. Saying what is making me anxious already feels better. Just put it out there. Just use what words you can, and you guys can just start talking about it. Because if you keep it inside, it just gets worse and worse and worse, and you just, it gets bigger and bigger. But again, if you say it out loud, <laughs> it's not as scary. A lot of people go through it. As cheesy as it sounds, you're not alone. A lot of people have anxiety. And so for the next four weeks, we're going to explore this theme. We're going to talk about it, about faith in an anxious world. And uh, it'll ask us to think about the things that unsettle us, the ways that we respond, and how God's involvement can give us new and better ways for us to show up. First part of this is to be clear about the reality of anxiety, that there are plenty of things in my life, in your life, in everybody's life that bring fear and concern that take hold of our minds and our bodies in a negative way. And so one of the questions that people have when we deal with this is, where is God when I feel anxious? And as you saw in the video, anxiety is something that exists in the world around us. It's something that we all experience. And because our anxious feelings can at times have the potential to grow and cause a lot of disruption in our lives, Anxiety is something that we all need to talk about. And throughout this series of messages over the next couple of weeks, we'll be opening up the Bible to watch God at work in anxious stories, learning a spiritual practice that can help us when we're stressed, and building relationships with people we can turn to when we need to talk. So let's start by taking a look again at that story in the Bible about Jesus walking on the water. This is from Mark 6. Jesus made his disciples get into a boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowd. After saying goodbye to them, Jesus went up onto a mountain to pray. Evening came and the boat was in the middle of the lake, but he was alone on the land. He saw the disciples struggling. They were trying to row forward, but the wind was blowing against them. Very early in the morning, he came to them, walking on the lake. He intended to pass by them. When they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost, and they screamed. Seeing him was terrifying to all of them. And just then he spoke to them, be encouraged. It's me. Don't be afraid. He got into the boat, and the wind settled down. His disciples were so baffled that they didn't know what to do. They were beside themselves. So what's something unusual about Jesus' words or actions here? One of the things that really stands out is that Jesus is steady while all around him is in turmoil, people and nature. And in the midst of it, Jesus is steady. He comes from his time of prayer He's not rushing anxiously about. He even waited a bit till dawn was breaking. He knew where he was going. And it's so interesting. It says that he made as if he was going to walk past them. Like he was on his way somewhere and he was calm when everything else is going off around him. It's almost a physical demonstration to the disciples of a spiritual truth that God is working towards a goal. That there's a day coming when all things are going to be made new, when there will be no more suffering, no more crying, no more pain. That this is a day that's coming and nothing will stand in its way. God, day by day in history is moving us towards that day when the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, when justice will roll down like mighty rivers. That day is coming, 
And Jesus steadfastly moves towards that day. Jesus isn't driven by the anxiety that drives others. He uh, comes to them. He's not frantically rushing to them saying, oh my gosh, what can we do? He's calmly walking forward into God's future. Some of you may remember the story of Lazarus in the Bible who became sick and his sisters expected Jesus to come right away. They, they were anxious. They sent a friend, Jesus, hurry up. Your friend is sick. And uh, Jesus waits. He waits a bit. And then he goes. The sisters are disappointed. But he still comes and he brings the power and the presence of God. I'm reminded of the words of a hymn, another hymn that comes from the late 1600s. It says, be still my soul. The Lord is on your side. Bear patiently the cross of grief or pain. Leave to your God to order and provide. In every change, he faithful will remain. Be still, my soul, your best, your heavenly friend, through thorny ways leads to a joyful end. Be still, my soul, your God will undertake to guide the future as he has the past. Your hope, your confidence, let nothing shake. All now mysterious shall be bright at last. Be still, my soul. The waves and winds still know his voice who ruled them while he dwelt below. Jesus' walk is steady, but when he encounters his disciples, he doesn't walk past them and keep going. He stops and gets into the wobbly boat. Jesus steps into the unsteady boat. That's not to say that our anxiety isn't real. It is. There are real difficulties and real problems. There are things we worry about at different stages of our lives. When we're older, we worry about our health and having enough to, to keep going. When we are teens, we worry about if we'll have friends and what to wear and will anybody like us and how's my future going to unfold. There are real difficulties and challenges, but the challenge of faith is to find peace in the storm, to welcome Jesus into our unsteady boats. He won't pass by. We matter to him. There are many stories in the Bible where someone shows signs that they're feeling anxious. There's another story a few chapters before where the disciples let Jesus know that they're feeling anxious. This is what we read from Mark 4. Later that day when evening came, Jesus said to them, let's cross over to the other side of the lake. They left the crowd and took him in the boat, just as he was. Other boats followed along. Gale force winds arose and waves crashed against the boat so that the boat was swamped. But Jesus was in the rear of the boat, sleeping on a pillow. They woke him up and said, teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? They were pretty anxious. And he got up and gave orders to the wind and said to the lake, silence, be still. And the wind settled down and there was great calm. And Jesus asked them, why are you frightened? Don't you have faith yet? And overcome with awe, they said to each other, who then is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. Jesus doesn't leave them alone in their anxiety. He joins them. He's with them. They matter to him. And whether they call on him or not, he shows up. And so what's making your boat feel unsteady lately? There's no shortage of things that come at us, both from our own lives, from our community, from our nation, from our world. We all feel anxious sometimes. That knot in your stomach or a nagging fear when you face a challenge that's your body's natural response to stress or pressure. Anxiety is a feeling that everyone at every age experiences. Anxiety can feel like a real problem. Sometimes it is. But here's the important thing to remember. Anxiety exists to tell us something important. Anxiety might be telling us that something is wrong or that we're in danger. It might be telling us something about our bodies, our relationships, or about basic needs like food and sleep. The key is that we learn to listen. Where is God at work in the midst of my anxiety? 
What might God or anxiety be trying to tell me about? And so we look at that question and we might begin to answer it. Where is God at work in the midst of my anxiety? What might God or anxiety be trying to tell me about? Maybe something about our schedule and the pressure that we're under. Times when we're beyond our comfort zone. Times when I'm eating or not sleeping enough, whether I'm putting myself in dangerous situations. Anxiety becomes a teacher. It becomes a moment for us to learn about ourselves. When anxiety takes control, it can make us feel unsteady. We try different things <coughs> to make that unsteady feeling go away. Those are called coping strategies. And so some coping strategies might numb our feelings like alcohol or drugs or self-harm, but cause even more problems. And so as anxiety comes and we begin to, to see things about ourselves and we begin to cope with it, it becomes a moment to look at our coping strategies. Coping strategies are everything we do to try to get rid of, reduce, or tolerate stress. You can find a lot of unhelpful coping strategies that people chose in the Bible. In the Old Testament, there's a story about Moses, and he's upset with people. They're putting all kinds of pressure on him. They, they don't want to follow God's way. They're challenging him. And so he starts yelling at them and strikes a rock with his staff. And, and it's, it becomes a moment that affects the rest of his life in a negative way. You go to the apostle Peter as he is with Jesus at the arrest and Peter is in the garden with Jesus and the soldiers come and Peter pulls out a sword and cuts off the ear of somebody turns to violence and Jesus says that's not the way and he heals him. Then later on Peter is in the uh, courtyard of the high priest and somebody says you're one of his followers and, and he lies. He says no I'm not and then they say it again he's, he lies and then he starts cursing and taking oaths and to lie. And then the rooster crows and, and he feels ashamed of himself. And so he's got lies and shame and he turned to violence and Jesus told him that's not the way. Uh, all these coping strategies over time, if we ignore anxiety, it can lead to all kinds of problems in our lives. It can cause other struggles like depression or shame. The good news is that we can work with anxiety in healthier ways than ignoring it or numbing it. We don't have to follow it down a dangerous path. There are healthy coping, healthy coping strategies that help us step out of our anxiousness and learn to see it differently. Anxiety doesn't have to take us down a dangerous path. When we listen to what our anxiety is telling us, we can learn about who we are, what situations make us feel unsteady, and what healthy coping strategies work for us. Each of us is different. In the notes, I've put a link to a blog a friend of mine wrote this past week. She lives in California near where the fires are. And she uses the image of doors that we need to walk through to move from despair to love. Each of us has different ways that work for us. Some find renewal in action, some find renewal in watching a sunrise. Some find renewal in watching tennis or race cars. Some play music and sing, or they write poems, or they write music. Learning about who we are and what works for us is a lesson that anxiety can teach us. We can use it to use our power to make changes. We can learn when we shouldn't be in some situation, and we can leave that situation to find another place where we're feeling less anxious. We can discover that there are things we can do. We can recognize where God is present and at work in our rocking boat. We can reflect on what God is bringing to us. We can practice listening to God so that we can experience peace and share that peace with others. It's kind of like we might cultivate a garden to grow what we want we can cultivate practices to grow peace in our lives by helping us walk through this anxious world and recognize God at our side in our unsteady boat. 
I want you to think back to the two stories that we've read from the Bible in this message. You can even consider other stories about Jesus you've read or heard. Notice that Jesus rarely traveled alone. In forming his group, the 12 disciples and the women who traveled with them, he created a close circle who supported one another even long after he was gone. Over the next weeks, we're going to talk about anxiety and depression because there are important things for every person to get comfortable talking about. And when we start to feel anxious or sad, there are three important things that we can do. We can look up, we can look inside, and we can look around. And we'll go over these again over the next weeks. We can look up. We pause in the midst of our anxious thoughts to look up and see God's wisdom through the Bible and talk with others who are walking in faith. We can look inside and we think and reflect on where God is at work inside us, what we're learning about ourselves. We can look around. We take a good look at our own anxious world so we can realistically evaluate it and we can share it with others. We can speak to others about it. As we look up together, I'm going to teach you some steps to build a circle of care like Jesus did a close circle of friends that you can trust and talk to when you're feeling unsteady. And I'm going to give you some tools to do that, to look inward. We're going to explore a prayer called daily replay. It's a simple prayer practice with a few steps you follow every day, or even in those moments where it feels like anxiety is taking over to help you spot God at work. I'm also going to challenge you to look around you wherever you are in the week, uh, and to think about using this prayer. We're going to go over this again and again, uh, but I'm going to just share it with you in this video today as we prepare to close our message. The Daily Replay, a helpful way to pray. The Daily Replay helps you reflect as you rewind through your day. as you rewind through your day. As a prayer, it is an act of worship. But it is also a habit we can form to help center and focus ourselves. It is based on an ancient practice of prayer that has been used for hundreds of years. Today we use the prayer to guide us through five steps. One. One. Become aware of God's presence. Find a quiet place away from distractions. Take several minutes to breathe. As you allow your body to grow quiet, become aware of God's presence with you now and throughout your day. You could ask yourself a question like, where has God been at work in my life today? Two. Number two. Review the day with gratitude. Take a moment to give thanks and reflect on questions like, What are good things that have happened today? What can I be thankful for? Number three. Three. Pay attention to your emotions. Ask yourself about how you felt at different points of the day. Both pleasant and unpleasant. You could look back at difficult moments of your day and think about where God might be at work in those challenging times. Four. Number four. Forgive. And ask for forgiveness. Take some time to look at your day through the eyes of the people around you. Ask yourself, where can you take the first step in restoring peace? Take a moment to reflect on where you may have missed the mark today. Where might I need to ask for forgiveness? Five. Number five. Look ahead to tomorrow. As you look at tomorrow, what do you hope will be different? What would you like to ask God for help with? The daily replay can be done anywhere, anytime. Using this prayer practice day after day makes it an easy habit to turn to when our days get challenging.
one, two. Rewind. Anywhere. Anytime. <laughs> We're going to be practicing this together in some of our Zoom evening prayers at seven o'clock each night. Won't use it every night, but we'll use it from time to time. I hope that you'll join us and, or if not, just use the link that's in the notes to review it and begin a new prayer habit. It will help you to find the presence of Christ and his people and whatever it is that brings anxiety your way. Faith in an anxious world, life in an anxious world. Our fears and unsettlement, our coping mechanisms, God's presence in the world. We can find the presence of Christ. We can find healthy ways to cope. We can be well. Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. That's where Jesus wants to lead us to. Peace, be still, be encouraged. I'm with you. Find rest for your souls. May God lead us these weeks to experience that. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer together, Let's pray for our world, for our nation, for our community, and with gratitude for God's gifts. Let's pray for one of our members named John, who's in the hospital. Let's pray for Chris as he continues to um, grieve the loss of Audrey. Let's pray together for Judy as she continues to recover at home, and for others in our congregation who find themselves uh, older. For one of our members, uh, Frank, who has moved to Connecticut to be near children, and for Howard and Jean, who've moved to Indiana to be near children as well. And so let's come to a time of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you thankful for the scriptures and thankful for the Fuller Youth Institute and for the materials that they've prepared to help us think through anxieties and coping strategies. Lord, we recognize in our world today that there are many things that are leading people to cope in unhealthy ways. People turn to violence and hatred to try to cope with the stress that they feel. Lord, we pray that our world might be calmed by your presence and by your spirit. We might find ways to bring ourselves into that place with others where we can speak about our anxieties, and where we can allow your spirit to bring peace to our souls. Lord, we pray for all those who suffer in our world, that there might be an end to their suffering, that you might bring healing grace to all who are sick, that you might provide for all who are hungry, that you might provide dignified shelter for all who are uh, on the road and who are refugees. Lord, we look for the day to come when all these things are true, but until that day, help us to participate as you walk steadily toward that future that we might walk with you towards it. Lord, we pray together for our nation. In the midst of all of the concerns we face now, give to us a sense of your presence and peace. Give wisdom to all of our national leaders that we might live in ways of justice and truth and mercy. Lord, we pray together for our community, for all those who are counselors especially who help young people as there are so many anxieties in that time of life. Lord, we pray for teachers, for administrators, for doctors and nurses, for uh, other counselors, for emergency workers. Lord, for all who seek to be the presence of Christ and the presence of mercy in the lives of others, we ask your grace. Lord, for uh, the prayers that we carry on our hearts, we take a moment of silent prayer. Lord, for all of your gifts to us, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for our deacons, and the way they've been able to help people who have called us this week. We give you thanks for our food ministry and for the food that we have to give to those who have come by. We give you thanks for our youth and, and the meetings that they are holding to encourage each other, for our children's ministry and the way they're trying to find an answer 
We give you thanks for our worship together as we open scripture and as we encourage each other through chat and through texts and through emails. Lord, you have blessed us richly. We pray that we might learn what it means to be a disciple, even as we remember the prayer you taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite Amy back to offer our closing hymn. Today's closing hymn is A Shelter in the Time of Storm. And so as you go this week, we pray that things will go well for you, that you are well, and that you find ways to practice the replay prayer as a way to reflect on your day, to be grateful, to look at things where you've been upset, to maybe find people you can share that with, and then to forgive and to ask for forgiveness and commit the future to God. It's a good practice, and we're going to be learning it together. And so as you go this week, let me offer this prayer. People of Jesus Christ, as you go, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you this day and every day. Amen. And so remember to reach out if you find yourself in any kind of need. We have food, we have resources, we have contacts, and uh, we're here to be together with you in this time. And so may God bless you as you go into the week.